maybe you have a ton of, uh, you know, a, a huge document, and you don't want to have to go and eyeball each time it shows like a squiggly line for spelling. Well, what you can do is you can come up here to the review section, and you can come up to the spelling and grammar. All you need to do is click on this, and by the way, it hasn't changed in the uh, many years in that you can use F7 to activate it, but you can click on the spelling and grammar and it will allow you to go out and check it so when I do that it opens up the spelling and grammar check so you can go through and uh, it will say hey there's a grammar problem with this with the will so you can say alright let's go to the next sentence and you don't have to do anything you can come down and it says any town alright any town uh, wait a minute uh, any town should be any space town well believe it or not that there's an actual name so what I'm gonna go ahead is go ahead and add this to my dictionary. So when I click on Add to Dictionary, it says, all right, that looks good. Now the other thing it's going to do is now come back up to the beginning of the document and say, hey, wait a minute, this is not in the dictionary, LN period. Well, it's not recognizing the fact that this is just lane, that, that, that's what you're using, lane period. Well, sometimes you might need to you know, change that or make some changes to it. Uh, you know, based upon how the formatting is. In this case, we'll go ahead and just let's show you how the ignore once works. So I click on ignore once, and yep, here it is. It goes down, and it says, "All right, you want to go ahead and use replacement? I think you mean replacement." Now I can add this to the dictionary. I can change, or I can use the change all, which means any time it finds replacement, maybe I just don't know how to spell replacement, it'll change every single one of them in the entire document, which is kind of cool. Now some of the options that we have, if you notice down here, if we click on options, it brings me into my word options screen, which then allows me to make any changes that I need in the proofing. Now one of the things that we might want to do is also use the custom dictionaries. Why would I want to do that? Well if I click on custom dictionaries you'll see that this has a default dictionary that I use. I can also add new dictionaries. Maybe I download a, uh, uh, maybe I'm a doctor and I use a lot of medical terms. Uh, you know, the custom, your, your standard dictionary for your word list might not have the word endoplasmic reticulum, which is a part of a cell. And uh, trust me, do I know how to spell it? I used to, not really, but um, if I have a medical dictionary that's in here that will know that, I can add that. Or maybe you're a lawyer and you have, uh, you know, custom. What will happen is, is that you can add these dictionaries, or you can create a new one. Maybe you're a really highly specialized code person or computer person, and you want to create a computer uh, dictionary that be using. Okay, not a problem. You can do that. So you can come in and you can click on the new and then create that dictionary. And what you'll find is though, it does need to have that dot DIC. That's how the word knows to go out and find dictionaries that it can use with that dot DIC. So I'll go ahead and cancel uh, this and you can browse and find anything that you're looking for. So this shows you how Word corrects and formats your text. We'll come back to this in just a second, but let's continue on here. And so now we're going to say we want to go ahead and use replacement. So all I need to do is click change and now it says, all right, sounds good. You've gone through your whole entire document and the spelling and grammar check is complete. So I click on OK. Now there's a problem though. Remember, I went in here and uh, I bypassed a grammar problem. Remember, I had the uh, red squiggly lines underneath here, but over here, I've got a grammar problem. So what I can do is I can run the spelling and grammar check again. If I run it again, it's going to say, well, no, 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 you already said to ignore that thing, and so the spelling and grammar check is complete. So always be careful about clicking that ignore button, because now Word says, no, nope, you ignored it. I'm going to ignore it too. That's all it is. Now, of course, if I come down here and I make a change to this, and I type in it will, and then I click off and I do it. Notice, oh, it says, ah, there's something new here. The it is not right. So what I can do is I can right click on it and it says you need to do it. It should be capitalized because it's the beginning of a sentence, right? So I go ahead and I click on it and I say, oh, that sounds good. And so now I'm done and I can, uh, you know, go ahead and you know continue on right and so that's how spelling and grammar check but there's a couple of things that you might uh, notice that guess what I didn't use punctuation 
on that sentence. It will bring you many years, and then it stops. For some odd reason, the grammar check has not pulled this off. That brings me to warning number three on sp you know spelling and grammar check. You need to always have someone else proofread it, and you should always check and make sure that everything looks good because there's never a, you know there's always going to be that one percent chance that it's going to not catch something, and you want to make sure that you're able to do that. Now, of course, if you're looking for other things, and we'll talk about some of the other tools a little bit later on, you can highlight words and make other words. You can even translate words into a different language. This is some new cool tools that we have here in our proofing concepts, and that's a little bit more advanced, and we'll take a look at it later. But remember we saw those options for the correction? What Wouldn't it be cool if you could have it um, automatically change things as you type well you can now to do this you need to come up to your word options and you're gonna want to go ahead and go to the proofing options now when you do this it tells you how word corrects and formats your text now it's gonna do this for all of the office programs it can ignore all the words in the uppercase you can ignore words that contain numbers we already saw about the dictionary modes uh, flag repeated words that are used. I like this one, ignore internet and file addresses. I mean, think about it. How many times have you typed in www.yahoo.com and you hit space and it goes, this is not a valid word. Well, that's because, it, you know, hey, dummy, it's a, it's a website, it's a URL, and you don't want it to flag that, so you can ignore the internet and file addresses as long as you're using the commonly used, uh, you know, the formatting for it. So if you used an HTTP, you know, colon, whack, whack, uh, you know, do that, or if you type in www. It will, you know, typically ignore any internet or file addresses. Now it'll say, right down here, you can check spelling as you type. You can use contextual spelling. This is that part where remember how I said I typed in t h e i r. Well, that's that's good. You can also mark the grammar errors as you type. So if you start typing a sentence and you haven't finished, you'll notice that the green squiggly starts showing up until you finish it. You can check the grammar with spelling. Uh, but sometimes what will happen is, is when you check grammar with spelling, if the sentence is wrong, it'll have the green squiggly line underneath the whole entire sentence, but yet there's a, a misspelled word in there. You won't see the misspelled word because the green kind of out you know it kind of goes over the red so you sometimes you might want to turn this off and do spelling first and then check grammar now this is kind of cool the check readability statistics when I select this what this does is it allows me to see how readable is your letter or your section or your document and it says what kind of writing style do you want to check grammar only grammar and style and then you can even go into the settings and say, well, what do you want to look for? Do you want to check as a comma required? Is there punctuation required for quotes? Spaces required between sentences? You can require these grammar things. Capitalization, fragments and run-on, misused words, those are those things of there and, you know, T-H-E-I-R. Possessives and plurals, punctuations, questions. Look at all the settings. Uh, you can even use style. Right now we're using grammar only. If I go to grammar and style, it's going to select all of the style issues. Use the first person. Sentences beginning with and, but, and hopefully. Uh, you know, do you want to use that? Relative clauses. I mean, a lot of stuff that, hey, maybe you don't have, a you know, an English lit degree and, and you're know, really good at grammar. Well, this will help you out to make sure that you, uh, you know, do it correctly. So we'll go ahead and just stick with grammar only, not worry about style. I click OK. Now, if I recheck the document, you're going to notice something. When I recheck the document, it's going to now what? Reset the spell checker and the grammar checker so that it will look at it and, you know, that way, remember how we said we choose to ignore things? I'll go ahead and click yes. Now I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And now when you go through, look at this. Remember how I said to ignore the lane? Guess what? It went ahead and it said, no, 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 wait a minute, this doesn't look right to me. So it did go through and, you know, check that out. So let's go ahead and run the spelling and grammar check again. So it's going to say, hey, wait a minute, do you want Cisco Lane? Well, let's go ahead and, you know, we'll go ahead and say, you know, and by the way, you can come up here and, you know, make edit changes. See now how I took the period? In other words, it says, you know what, LN is okay when it is the, uh, you know, for Lane, you don't put a period after that. That's just not proper, you know, spelling and grammar. 
Okay, so you can you can see how that works. So now you can say, all right, looks good. The edit looks good, and it looks like we have everything uh, set up. So we go ahead and hit cancel, or we can you know go ahead and do the edit right here and make changes, or we can right click and you know make whatever changes that we need to here. So there are a lot of options on what we can do in order to check the spelling of this entire environment. So now we've gone through, and if I want to start do the spelling and grammar check again it's going to come up we'll go ahead and ignore once and once we finished and completed the spelling and grammar check like we did again it's going to come up with this readability statistics which is kind of nice we already know how down here we can see how many words but do you know you can find out how many characters how many paragraphs sentences how many sentences per paragraph words per sentences characters per word averages um, and this is important because what this does is it shows you the readability of the particular, uh, you know, whether it's a document what, or letter or things you do. It says that you have the reading ease. It's a 73.3% and it gives you the flesh Kincaid grade level of 5.6. Now if you want, you can do a little research on the grade levels and how they measure the readability of a particular sentence. But let's say you're writing and you need to make sure the junior high kids can read and understand the, the, the novel or the concept or the, or the instruction manual. You might want to run the readability statistics to make sure that at that level, like a 6th grade reading level, they would be able to understand that. So that's what this allows you to do. So some cool tools that show us how we can do grammar and we can do uh, some of the auto check options. One other thing we do want to show you though under the word options here for the uh, proofing and that is that you can change how word corrects and formats as you type. So if I click on the autocorrect options, I can use the automatically use the suggestions from the spelling checker. Remember, if I'm typing, it'll just put the little squiggly marks in there. If I do this, it'll actually change the word as I type. You can also change the auto format, built-in heading list. Do you want to go ahead and start doing automatic bulleted lists when you use a bullet or a number and things like that? You can preserve styles. You can auto format the plain text email document. I mean, all these things that you can make changes. Math autocorrect. So if you use uh, math and remember how we did the formulas, you can you know do things that that you do. You can use the slash alpha and it will make the little characters and the alephs and things like that. So these are all automatic corrections and we'll talk about our auto settings in another video and show you how you can make some changes but I just want to show uh, those particular options for spelling and grammar. So now if I go ahead and say this replacement or replacement, watch what happens. It automatically goes ahead and puts that suggested word. Now if you don't want that to appear and you want to turn that off, remember you can go ahead and go back and change that. And we'll show that in the next video when we start talking about automatic features. It's important for us to spend the time that we did to show you some of the tools you need in order to manipulate text and also check on just how well your uh, text entering is going from grammar to spelling to readability. We saw how we can use several different techniques of double clicking, triple clicking, clicking in the margins, using the mouse to select, using the keyboard. We then saw that there are many different ways we can manipulate and move text. We can cut it out of one section and move it. We can copy it and put it somewhere else and paste in several different places. We also saw that once we start getting our text typing and we want to make sure that we're spelling it correctly so we can use the grammar check and uh, the spell check. We also saw that you know depending on how you're typing we can also take a look at things like uh, sentence fragments, you know whether you're using capitalization at the beginning. The Word 2007 system is going to check that and make sure that everything's okay. And finally, and I know this is a joke among many of the CBT Nuggets uh, instructors and owners is the readability of my slides that you see here are probably in question but hey don't worry about my word documents because I can run a readability scan on it and see just how well it fits into somebody's uh, reading level. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing. Microsoft Word 2007 Automatic Features Part 1. Now whenever you get into a word processor you need some help sometimes with those those fat fingered words. Now we already saw how spelling and grammar is going to help you out but what if you had someone that was literally like right over your shoulder and as you typed they uh, they went in and they fixed things like you, you fat fingered a word like about and you spelled it with two B's and it automatically boom A-B-O-U-T 
comes up. Well, guess what? With autocorrect functionality, you're going to be good to go. For some people, it might.